Uh, but yes, good morning, everybody. So last time I was up here, I was up here in October. So it's been about six months or so uh, since I've been up here. So I was nervous then, I'm nervous again. Um, but anyway, last time I got up here, I talked about my thoughts. I let you through my thought process and everybody seemed to like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that again, if that's cool with everybody, right? Uh, so that begs the question of, well, what's going on in David's mind, right? Uh, what is what's been going on in my life. And um, I usually don't share this kind of stuff because I'm not one to draw attention to myself on purpose. Uh, but yesterday was my birthday. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, and it was, uh, under normal circumstances, it's just a birthday, right? I've had a bunch of them so far. But uh, yesterday was kind of a big one because I am officially out of my 20s. Uh, I am 30 years old <laughs> now. And uh, so, so that's been on my brain, right? That's been the thing that's been in my head. That's been the thing that's been on my mind and things been driving my thought process. And that's, that's where I wanted to start my thought process this morning. Um, and I thought about it and I was like, okay, well, 30, I mean, I've only been 30 for like 24 hours or so, right? So it, <laughs> it doesn't really feel that different from 29, right? Uh, but that, that got me thinking, okay, 29 doesn't really feel that different from 30. 28 didn't really feel that different from 30. 27 didn't really feel that different from 30. However, when I went back to 26 to 27, I was like, okay, there's a bigger change, right? There's a, there's a bigger shift in my perspective. Uh, that was the year I moved out, uh, moved in with Jose and Julio. Uh, and that was, that was a big thing, right? I was working, I was going to school. I'm still working, I'm still going to school, moved out, right? It was this bigger change in my life, right? And it doesn't mean that there's not smaller changes, right? There's not minimal day-to-day -day changes. like. Uh, when you go to work, right? Oh, I clocked in at 8 a.m. on Monday, and then Tuesday I clocked in at 10.58, right? Technically, I'm early. Uh, that's a change, right? That's an improvement. Uh, or if you go work out, like you go to the gym, oh, I did six sets instead of the five I did the other day, right? And those are the kind of thoughts that have been on my mind. I'm like, okay, well, this is, what am I talking about here, right? right to, the word that I'm looking for is, is growth. Um, to, to simplify, to bring all that stuff down, right? It's, it's growth, right? And that's what I want to talk about uh, today. Uh, Freddie, if you can go ahead and put up my, my PowerPoint. Uh, you don't have to go to the, just go ahead and put it up first. There we go. You don't have to go to the first point just yet. Um, but right, so I'm talking about growth, right? And so when I think about growth, there's the physical side of growth, right? Like your body, how you grow, how you change, how you age. And then there's also, as a Christian, as a disciple, there's the spiritual side. There's a spiritual aspect of growth, right? And, and the physical side, that's not that hard, right? People do that in their sleep, right? As long as you make sure that you get enough to eat, you know, you make sure you're sleeping and taking care of yourself, you'll grow, you'll age. And then if you make it another rotation or orbit around the sun, everybody, you know, posts on your Facebook wall and you feel great about it for the day, right? Um, that happened to me yesterday. So thank you for everybody who posted on my Facebook wall. But um, so that's the physical side, right? That's not particularly too complicated. But the spiritual side, that can be complicated, or, or at least it can feel complicated. It can feel overwhelming. It can feel difficult at times. Um, but and that's where my thoughts went, right? And so my question then became, okay, well, what does it have to be complicated? Does it have to be crazy? Does it have to be hard? Does it have to be difficult? And I'm not saying it can't, but I think it can be simplified to an extent. I think, and this is my personal opinion, I think it can. And uh, we're going to look at some verses today that I think back up that point. So if we can go ahead and go to the next slide, Freddie. And you guys can see it up there. It's uh, Matthew chapter 13, verses 3 through 8. And I'll go ahead and give a second for the translators back there. But this is a verse that you've probably seen before if you've been a Christian for any length of time. Or, you know, hopefully you've seen it at some point, right? Uh, but again, it's Matthew 13, verses 3 through 8. And I have it up here, and I'll just go ahead and read it for you guys. It says, uh, then he told them with many things in parables, saying, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, but because the soil was shallow, when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, 160 or 30 times what was sown. So again, hopefully you've seen this 
verse before, right? Uh, and this is, this is where I'm going to make my argument here for my, my first major point, is that growth, and I'm not a gardener, right? But growth, as far as plants go, and Jesus is making a metaphor for plants here, growth requires three things for plants, right? It requires good soil, it requires good clean water, and a good amount of sunlight, right? Not too much, but enough sunlight to where you can grow and photosynthesize, right? Those are the three things that make up a plant's environment, a good environment for those plants to grow in. And if you look at this verse, right, this is Jesus talking, right? So usually whenever he talks, it's usually a good idea to pay attention. So when he talks, I mean, basically here in this metaphor, he's talking about an environment for, for growth. He, I mean, he's making the metaphor, right, for, for spiritual growth and faith, but it is, it's the same thing. It's, it's, there's, there's some parallels here for growth, right? The first one, it didn't fall, it fell on the path, right? And usually paths are hard and compacted. There's no real way to get in there. So the birds come and eat it, right? The second one fell on rocky soil, right? There's some soil, but there's not enough to really sustain it. And so it dies when the sun comes out. Uh, the third one, there's, it falls along the soil, right? And it falls, it gets good roots, but these thorns come and they choke it out, right? Weeds or whatever. And then uh, on the last one, that one actually takes good root. It falls on good soil and it actually has what it needs to grow, right? It has the good roots, doesn't have anything in, uh, interfering with it and it's getting what it needs to grow. Let me reference my notes here. Right, so my point is a good environment goes a long way, right, towards growth. And we can apply that physically, right, but it also can also apply spiritually. So that's my main point for up here. And so that begs the question, well, what does your environment look like? And if we go to the next slide, thank you, Freddie. If we go to the next, uh, the next slide here, what does your environment look like, right? You can see it up on the screen. I've got the left-hand side that's obviously not so nice for plants in an environment, right? And the right side that is a lot better. On the left side, you can see dry, compacted, hard ground, hard ground right? You can see dirty water that's coming out of probably rusty pipes. And you can see some trees on the left side, but if you look on the bottom of those trees, there's a lot of shade and there's a lot of dirt. And there's not enough sunlight coming through there, right? If you look on the, on the right side, but that's obviously where I think we most of us want to be, right? The plenty of sunshine, good clean water, and uh, nice, good, nutritious soil that has all the nitrogen and nutrients and all that stuff that it needs, right? And so my question of what does your environment look like, right? Do you have what you need to grow spiritually, right? Do you have a good environment? And I, I can't answer that question for you guys. This is, this is a rhetorical question, right? Uh, but I do want to do want you guys to answer that for yourselves, right? And and also I can't be up here and say, oh well, I always look like the right. That's not true, <laughs> not at all. Uh, there are days when the sun doesn't shine and there's no rain and it's nice and dry out in my life, right? Spiritually, and I think that's everybody. But it takes work. It, it takes hard work in order to make a good environment, right? Just just making sure you have what you need is hard to do. Uh, but it is essential. It's not necessarily complicated, but it can be difficult. Um, so that's what causes, right? So, so we take the look. We took a look at environments, right? Like good environment goes a long way, right? Which one are you on? But what about what causes growth, right? Because you can have a great environment, right? But what actually causes that growth, right? So Freddie, you can go to the next one. Uh, this is Matthew twenty-two verses 36 to 40. Uh, and I'll go ahead and read it for you guys. Uh, again, this is Jesus talking, uh, but it's Matthew 22, verses 36 through 40. And it says, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commands. So again, this is Jesus, right? And I don't know about you guys, but when I first sat down to study the Bible, and when I sit down to study the Bible with somebody for one of the first few times, this is one of the verses that I look at. And this is one of the first verses that was shown to me. Um, and my question of, okay, well, what causes the growth, right? Because we can have this amazing environment. You can have, you know, to take the plant metaphor, you can have a greenhouse going and irrigation and all that stuff, or you can have all that stuff. But if you don't plant anything, nothing is going to grow. And so my question was, what 
what causes the growth. This is it, honestly, right? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your soul, right? It's your relationship with God that causes you to grow. That should be what it is. That, that should be the seed that Jesus was talking about in our previous, uh, in the previous verse that we were looking at, right? The one that fell everywhere. That seed should be your relationship with God. And you got to make sure you plant it and you got to make sure that you have the right environment for it, right? So that's my second main point. And uh, my third main point here is that, that that's hard. Um, that, that's, that's really hard. Uh, relationships are hard. Uh, there's no getting around that. Just as human beings, relationships, they take work. Um, there's no magic formula to them. Nobody just pops out of the sky, right? Um, I'm reminded of two brothers, uh, and I'm gonna kind of, I'm not gonna throw them under the bus or anything, but I am gonna uh, use them as good examples of, of things that I saw in terms of relationships. The first one was uh, Edwin, and the second one was Jose. Uh, Edwin just got married last weekend. Uh, and uh, yeah, so shout out to Edwin and Iris. Congratulations, guys. Um, but I remember there were specific instances where Edwin called me and he was like, dude, I need to talk to you. And I was like, well, what's going on? And he would just go Bleh, and just vomit on me about whatever was going on with, in his relationship, right? And I remember sitting there and talking to him about these things. Okay, what about this? What about that? What do you think about it from this perspective? What do you think about it from that perspective? Right? What if you take a step back? This is what I see. This is what you see. This is what somebody else might see, right? I remember, I remember just sitting there and talking to him on the phone and just multiple times about what was going on and just trying to work through things. Uh, and and I, I love Edwin to death. And I was so happy for him last weekend when we were out here, right? I was so happy for him. I was sitting there and I was, I was, I was standing there and I was just so happy and I was so proud of him because the work that he put in with his girlfriend, well, now his wife, like they're married now, you know? That's it. it was, I got to see that firsthand. You know, and, and the other brother that I saw was uh, Jose, Jose Salinas. Uh, don't worry, bro, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna reveal anything. He's here today, uh, him and Esme are here today. Um, but yeah, the other, I actually lived with Jose for about a year. Uh, when I first moved out, he was one of my first roommates. And uh, I remember in the span of a year, he went from single and not dating to married and moved out and living in Brownsville with his wife, right? And uh, it was pretty quick, but I gotta be honest, I saw that man put the work in, like, for real. I remember he had this schedule that was like on and off every week. It was like a bi-weekly schedule where he would go one week, they would go out and have a, have a date. And the other week they'd have a phone date. And I just remember him coming home and then he'd be home for like 15, 20 minutes, change, and then boom, take off. And, oh, I'm going over here. We're going to go do this. We're going to go do that. And I remember seeing him do those things. I remember like, I, I would live with him. I saw him do those things. I saw him put the work in and they're married and they're here today. Amen, right? Uh, and they've been married for a few years now. And it's, it's, just, it's just like when you put the work in, it works. And that same type of work that you put in in your relationships with everybody else, you need to put that work in with God, in your relationship with God. Because that is what ultimately, that's the seed, right? That's the metaphor that I'm getting at here, right? The seed goes so far, right? If you just put the work in in your relationship with God and you give it a great environment or the best environment you can, God will bless that. So uh, to wrap it up here, you can go to the last slide pretty. I think it's uh, John. Yeah. Okay. So John chapter six, verse 26 and 27. So this, so I've talked about three major things, right? What do you need, right? You need, you need a good environment, right? And it takes hard work and your relationship with God should be at the center, right? For fear, for, for spiritual growth, that's what you need. Um, and so I want to take a look at this verse because I think when we have trouble growing or we're in a rough spot or whenever we're just down in the dumps, right? It's not going well. The sun's not shining. You know, there's no water, there's no rain and, and, and you know, the ground is dry, right? I want to take a look at this verse. It's John 6, 26 through 27. It says, Jesus answered them, look, uh, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils uh, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, God the Father has placed the seal of approval. A lot of times when, at least for me, uh, I can't speak for everybody, but for me, whenever I have a hard time with my faith, whenever things you know, are not going well, 
uh, you know, I'm neck deep in it and, you know, it just feels like it's flying everywhere. Uh, a lot of times I'm doing it for the wrong reasons. Uh, a lot of times I'm doing it because I want something specific, right? I'm looking for something either physical or monetary or whatever, like, or a food or something. I don't know. I'm doing it for something physical, I'm not necessarily doing it for the right reasons. Um, and so I wanted to include this because I want to, I want to, want to kind of challenge you guys, you know, are, are you doing, is your spiritual growth happening for the right reasons or is it happening for the wrong reasons? And this is a verse that I wanted to show with you guys. Um, that's what I've got for you guys this morning. Uh, thank you so much for letting me come up here and do this. Uh, hopefully you all enjoyed it. Hopefully you all got something out of it. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, you guys. Um, yeah. Uh, at this time, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and pray for the cup and the bread. So please join me with you will, if you will, for communion. Uh, let's pray. Dear Father, thank you so much for this uh, beautiful morning that we have. It's nice and fresh outside, but uh, just thank you so much for just a Sunday that we can all come together, either virtual or in person, that we can just be here and, and just be love on one another. And remember the, the sacrifice that you gave for us, Father, the sacrifice that you gave on the cross for us, Lord. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Good job, David. Thank you. Oh, uh, thank you, guys. Uh, while everybody's doing that, uh, also, if you would like to give contribution, uh, you can do that online. Uh, that is at rgv.church, and you can follow the steps on the website. If you have it in person, uh, you can give it to Mr. Luke Wilkinson right here if you want to give it in cash or uh, just give him, you know, your credit card or whatever. Um, <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and pray for that, too. Uh, dear Father, thank you so much, again, just for a beautiful day. Thank you for the money that we have. Thank you for the jobs that we have. Thank you for everything that we have that we can give back to you, Father. We can give back to you so you can use it for what you need to use it for, right? Keeping the lights on here, but also keeping people employed, keeping people what they need to do and, and, and just using it to, to grow your kingdom, Father. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Didn't David do an incredible job? I am, I'm so grateful for the, the growth that I've seen David have over this past year. Uh, for many of you that don't know, David does all of the AV. Uh, he is training people to, uh, to add to the AV team. Uh, he has worked tirelessly with other brothers. Uh, like Jose, to get the um, Facebook Live, and, or excuse me, the YouTube uh, Live for the memorial service that we had. He has just done some incredible work and incredible growth this year. And it takes a lot of work, right? It takes a lot of work to grow, but David is a great example of a brother who has put the work in and grown. And I truly appreciate it. I wanted to go through some announcements before we close out with one final song. Kick my singers off the stage. Uh, so there will be a family group leaders meeting today at 3.30.